Patrick Mahomes, Jalen Hurts, the Kansas City Chiefs, the Philadelphia Eagles. Both of these offenses under the microscope. We're going in. We're going to take a critical look. Third down production. After looking at the AFC Championship game as an Eagle fan, I'm going to give you an honest evaluation of what I saw from Patrick Mahomes in that Chiefs offense. Whole lot to go over here, guys. Everything from formation to pretty much play design and kind of like what I thought they were trying to do, what they, what they were trying to accomplish. All right, y'all. Let's get into this one. What's up, Cerebral Football fans? My name is Steven Heider. This is Gate City Sports Channel. Man, today's topic, bro, we're going to go under the microscope, man. We are lifting the hood up. We are going to take a very critical look at both of these offenses. Starting with, right out the bat, we're going right into season totals, and we're going to talk about what these offenses were and what we can learn real quick from just looking at the numbers. The first thing I'll tell you is the Kansas City Chiefs have run 236 plays on third down on the season compared to the Philadelphia Eagles 265. The Eagles ranked top five. I will say both of these offenses, they've run a lot of plays on the season. Uh, the Chiefs are pretty good at, at keeping themselves out of third down, if I'm being honest. And I think that's why their play total is a little below the Eagles, to be quite honest. They have 118 first downs on the season, which is a 50% first down rate. That is very good. We already know the Philadelphia Eagles are really, really good. The Eagles have 125 first downs on the season on third down, which is a 47.2% first down rate. So we can see both of these offenses – we are in for a treat on Sunday night, guys. This is going to be a heck of a football game, I'm going to be honest. 19 touchdowns for the Chiefs, 15 touchdowns for the Eagles on the season on third down. Turnovers. Chiefs are a little bit more prone to turn the ball over, I'm going to be honest, guys. They have seven interceptions on the season, which works its way out to a 3% turnover rate, while the Philadelphia Eagles have three interceptions on the season, one fumble on the season, and a one and a half, so half of the Kansas City Chiefs' turnover rate. So... Right from the jump, what I see real quick is that the Chiefs do a really good job keeping themselves out of third down situations. But when they're on third down, Patrick Mahomes can really be kind of special. And we're going to get into some of the film and kind of like some of those special moments I saw from the AFC Championship game. Their pass to run ratio is really, really far apart, guys. I'm not going to lie to you. They don't even try to run the ball. Uh, passes 187, runs 49 on third down. That works its way out to a 79.24 to 21.76 ratio. Almost 80-20 pass to run. The Chiefs don't make much of an effort to try to run, guys. As a matter of fact, uh, tracking their game from last week, they had 15 third downs but only 14 qualified in terms of the play column because one was called back by penalty. So of those 14 plays, guys, they ran the ball twice. So, I mean, it kind of gives you a hint in, into how that kind of works out. In reverse... Looking at, or contrast, in contrast, looking at the Eagles. 153 passes on the season, 112 runs. When you work that ratio out on third down, it is a 57.74 pass ratio to 43.26 run ratio. So 57.43, just kind of call it that way, make it a little easier to clean it up. A little bit more favorable than 60-40, if you will. You can see the Eagles are definitely a little bit more balanced on third down. But I do want to point something out here because I, I think that sometimes these numbers are not indicative of what could happen in a game, right? You hear a lot of coaches, they always say these uh, cliche sayings, right, that every game, every game has its own story, right? It's got its own fit, its own feeling, its own chemistry to it. I want to point something out about the Chiefs tracking those 14 plays. I broke it down by the exact distances. The Kansas City Chiefs on plays of third and seven and above, so anything above seven yards. Out of 14 third down plays, half of them were above third and seven. Seven out of 14 plays. Not a lot of opportunity for runs there. And I can even tell you that's even deceiving because one of their plays, one of their plays was a third and goal. So it wouldn't qualify into what we're looking at. But truth be told, that third and goal was taking place on the 19 yard line due to a holding call the play prior. So it's a little misleading. There was really eight out of 14 plays. And like I said, every game has its own kind of identity, its own flow, its own nature, its own rhythm to it. And I do think sometimes that, that kind of storyline can get left out. And we can see in this particular storyline, they only ran the ball twice in that game, two out of 14, you know, plays. Wasn't a lot of opportunity to do anything else. I mean, they were in distances to where it would have been kind of foolish to run the ball. Breaking it down further, what I saw from the Kansas City Chiefs from that championship game uh, they were pretty interesting in terms of like the way that they played their 12 and 11 personnel. 
truth be told, guys, they were exactly right down the middle. Seven times they were in 11 personnel. Seven times they were in 12 personnel. The one play that did get canceled, though, I will point out, would have been 11 personnel. So they would have been a little bit heavier there. In terms of 3 by one versus 2 by 2 sets, they were predominantly 3 by one nine plays compared to the five plays in a 2 by 2 set. I will warn, though, most of the time that they played in a 2 by 2 set, that 2 by 2 set came out of 12 personnel. Goes back to that whole storyline of every game has a rhythm, every game has a flow, every game has a feeling, right? Well, you're going to probably play a lot of 12 personnel in 2 by 2 sets if you're in a lot of short yardage situations on third down. And the Bengals did an incredibly good job at not allowing that to happen. There's a reason why the Bengals had an opportunity to win that football game. But I also want to talk about why the Chiefs won that game ultimately because I got to tell you, man, Patrick Mahomes, bro, special plays. I hate to say this, man, because, you know, I don't want this guy to make special plays on Sunday. I don't. I'm an Eagles fan. I want to see the opposite of those special plays. But, man, there were just a couple of games, a couple of plays inside of this game to where the play died. It was dead. Like, they had everything kind of covered up well. They did a really good job for a split second or two. But then Patrick Mahomes doesn't play off schedule. I don't want to get people confused here. Off schedule means you kind of break containment. You you know you break the pocket, and then the player, you know the the target, your receiver, also breaks down their route concept. So they're going to leave their originally designed route concept and is a scramble drill. That's off schedule play. It's not quite that. It's kind of hanging in there and buying and buying and buying time to the last possible minute, and then ripping the heart out of your opponent. Man, Mahomes did it a couple times to to the Bengals in that AFC championship game, guys, there was a couple of plays to where I was just watching. And I was just thinking to myself, like, I feel for the Bengals in this moment, man, because I, I mean, it's just Pat Mahomes being Pat Mahomes. It's Pat Mahomes being Pat Mahomes. I don't know what else I can say there. Some other things that I saw here, some other things that I saw here from this Kansas city offense. I still think there's a concern here about Patrick Mahomes' ankle. I don't know. You can say, well, Steve, they said this, they said that. I don't care what you say. Words don't mean jack crap to me, man. I'm sorry, guys, I've scouted before and I've coached before. Show me what you're putting on film because film tells the truth. What they put on film was max protection a couple times on third down. Two plays in particular, I went back, I watched, and I saw saw very clear signs of a seven-man protection, which I would call anything above seven-man, seven- and eight-man protections to be max protection. A lot of chipping, a lot of things like that, too, even in six-man protections, where they would still keep a seventh man to kind of chip and then go out for the play. So... Definitely a concern to try to keep that high ankle sprain, try to keep Pat, you know, kind of healthy there. And there was one play that I thought was really uncharacteristic of Andy Reid because it was down in the red zone. And mind you, it was it was a difficult play for them to convert, but I'm just not used to Andy Reid being kind of a passive and conservative play caller. And when you are max protected with seven guys and only really leaking out three guys into a route, I'm not used to seeing that from Reid personally. That one kind of caught me off guard. I wouldn't have expected to see that, to only see a three-man route on a third and goal situation to where you need to get the ball into the end zone. Uh, It was kind of a dump off to Kelsey on the play, so that one kind of shocked me, and that told me that there's clearly still some concern here about Patrick Mahomes' ankle. He's got two weeks, though, guys. To be fair, you ain't healing a high ankle in two weeks. I can tell you that straightforward. He ain't going to be 100%. I don't care what they tell you. I know because I've played on high ankles before. You're not going to be 100% on a high ankle. With that said, they're going to get him some vitamin T. Some of you guys have played. You guys know exactly what I'm saying. You know what vitamin T is. And he'll he'll be okay, man. It'll be a matter, it won't be a pain thing, I don't think. I think it'll be more a matter of uh, mobility, the, the actual, you know, ability to move and bend the ankle, to be, to be precise here. What I will say is, going back to special players making special, you know, plays, those moments, that infamous play, which was the last third down of the game, it was a third and four. Go back and watch that play that Patrick Mahomes makes. Guys, this is a dude playing with a high ankle sprain. You can see that he's thinking about dumping the ball off to the back there, but it doesn't look like the back's going to make the first down marker. He's got to gut it out. He's got to take on all that pain. He's got to take on all that lack of mobility inside the ankle, and he's got to beat dudes to the marker, and he does it. And there's some frustration there with the push out of bounds. It was rightfully called. I know it's a tough call to make in the moment, but, I mean, he committed He committed the penalty, to be real. This is going to be tough about this game, man. Like, this is going to be very interesting. I saw some throws that were uncharacteristic of Pat Mahomes where he missed. Foot placement was bad. He, the footwork was pretty bad on one of the plays I was watching. I mean, you know, he's 
he's definitely pigeon toeing. Toes are facing one way, the ball the ball's going the other way. And I know Pat throws a lot from different arm angles and things like that, and his footwork's not always clean. That's been a knock on him coming out of college that his footwork's not the greatest. But I mean, that was a play that I think if Pat Mahomes could have it back. 99 out of 100 times Pat Mahomes is making that throw, and he's making that throw correctly. I just think that that one play, I think it got away from him for a second. This is an interesting matchup, guys. I do think that a high percentage of the likelihood of victory here will come down to how you perform on third down. Can you win on third down? Can you win the downs that matter? To me, first pressure and third down is what really separates the good teams. These are two very good teams. I think we're going to be in for a heck of a showing. All right, y'all, let me know. Let me know what you think, man. Leave your comments down below. Kansas City's offense on third down, guys. Hopefully I gave you a lot of information here. They don't really run the ball that much. Uh, They will use a lot of shifts, a lot of motion. There was one play in particular I watched, and I thought to myself, like, man, that's a nice little wrinkle there, guys. I really like what they did here. It was a switch route. Unfortunately, the receiver dropped the ball, didn't actually make the catch, but it was open. Like, it was a very well-designed play by Andy Reid on that switch route. It got got him open. He was definitely open. I think that was uh, MVS that was open on that one. But, uh... We'll see what happens, guys. We'll see what happens on Sunday, guys. This is going to be a heck of a game. We have two really good offenses coming up. Very different ways of accomplishing their goals, but nonetheless, these are two really good offenses. I will give you one final note that I'll say here. I will say that I don't think this is the best pass-catching group that we have played. Simply put, MVS is better. I think MVS is a little underrated, man. Watching him on film with Kansas City and Pat Mahomes, he's pretty good. I'm going to be honest with you. He might be inconsistent, but there's clear talent there. Uh, Kelsey's Kelsey, man. Kelsey's just, he's tough to defend. Doesn't matter who's on the field. You know, the, the more times you can get Kelsey into a situation where he's staying in and blocking instead of going out on a route, I like that advantage to the Eagles. With that said, I did not love Sky Moore, and Sky Moore played a lot for them on third down last week. I, I, there was a, a play in particular where I thought his depth was all wrong and he ended up putting two players. They ended up converting on the play, ironically, but you got two guys in the same exact hole inside of the zone. You see that he, had, you know, Sky Moore ends up having to move down and move back towards uh, Patrick Mahomes. I saw some things there from like Juju Smith Schuster and from Sky Moore where I was like, man, this receiving core is not the greatest, to be honest. With that said, Pat Mahomes is still the quarterback, man. I expect this to be one heck of a fight. All right, y'all. Peace. I'm out of here.